Hello! So, today we're going to be taking a look at the Airbus A310 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This has been prompted by the imminent arrival in the next few days of the Airbus A300 from Inibuilds. So, the A310 that's in Flight Simulator was built by Inibuilds. So, I'm guessing the A300 is going to be fairly closely related to it because, I, as far as I understand, the, the model of A300 they are developing is the, the late model that incorporated advances made from the A310. So it's kind of, you know, a very close cousin of the A310. Or not cousin, um, ancestor of the A310. Anyway, let's go and jump inside the aeroplane and I'm going to work through the checklist I wrote up ages ago and we'll see how we get on. Now, as far as I remember, the inside views, if I go control one, two, three, four, five, they are not very helpful. So I've programmed my own views to which show an overview of the overhead and the eyebrow panel, if you want to call it that, and the um, MCDU and the FGCP and the pedestal, and obviously back to the center. So we'll, we'll see how we get on. To be honest, I haven't flown this airplane for a long time, so mistakes are going to be made, but I thought it would be a good kind of opportunity to let's do a refresher of flying this airplane and see how far we can get so it's worth pointing out if we go and look at little nav map we can see or we should be able to see where are we go to the correct place in the world melbourne so we are going to fly from melbourne to canberra and we want to go and activate the leg for some reason little nav maps had a bit of a turn with that and there we go we can now see we are going to be leaving Melbourne in a few minutes and if we zoom out we can see we've got the basic route programmed in to go into Canberra and I've got a marker there because there's a 9,000 feet limit at Bixav I noticed above 9,000 so and it's got about 75 miles so I think the aircraft think will think it can descend earlier but we'll want some time to talk about things properly on the approach so I've given myself some leeway there Okay, so we're going to climb out to 36,000 feet out of Melbourne. Um, but anyway, let's go through and see if we can remember how to start this aeroplane up. Um, I will admit, I'm I'd, like, I said, like I said, I'm going to make mistakes, so <laughs> bear with me. But it should be um, interesting. So if you want to see me make mistakes and have a go at me in the comments for missing things or doing things wrong, feel free. I'm not a real pilot. This is just me, you know, having some fun. Okay, so Alt and 1 will take us overhead. Oh, do we want Alt and 1? Yeah, we want the battery switches on. And then we want to use external power if it's available, and it is. And I'm guessing if we look on the tablet, we will notice... Uh, where is it? Yeah, GPU is plugged in, which means we could use it. Well, that's, that's why we could use it. So then, if we go Alt 2, we want to look at the APU, turn the master switch on and click the start button. That's going to take a while to happen, so while that's happening we're going to do the IRS switches. So Alt 1, and they're up here, so this is the inertial navigation system. Switch it to nav, and I think I've got it to instant alignment, so we don't have to wait for 10 minutes for it. So it's going, align mode is going out, or will hopefully go out soon. Uh, we can pull up status, which I guess it, I'm guessing it will show nothing because it is on instant align. Um, oxygen section, so that's on the overhead over here. There we go. Low power supply, and that's gone into the green immediately, which is great. Don't know why I do if it didn't, to be honest. <laughs> So we go down to the MCDU now. We can. It's saying align IRS. We can clear, IRS even. We can clear that. <coughs> now I have got this flight programmed into Simbrief, so it'll be interesting to see what we can do with it. So if we go in, I believe it's in the menu and A cars. And yes, my memory's correct. So there's my username on Simbrief, so I can do a request from Simbrief, and it. Pulls up the flight plan, which is great. Company route uplink done. Fantastic. Clear the message. So we'll put a flight ID in. So virtual flight one, two, three. Drop that into the flight ID. 
We'll put a cost index in of 100, just to, we're making numbers up here. We're not doing this ultra realistically, we're just nosing around really. The next page, um, we've got block fuel. So we're gonna need to have some fun with looking up numbers in the tablet. So if we go to the weights and balances and pull up the live data, because I haven't programmed it all properly, and it's only a short flight, the amount of fuel on the aircraft at the moment is 42, uh, 43.2 thousand. So Alt 3, 43.2 in block then, 43.2. Zero fuel weight. So we'll go and look at the tablet again and zero fuel 176.7 basically so go and look down here 176.7 i could have pressed the keyboard combination then good night and that's calculated the rest for us but we now want the center of gravity so we go back over here and it's down here 28 percent so 28.0 so that's done all of that. So if we go next page, we get the the data. If we go, so interestingly, we pulled in the legs, didn't we? So let's go and look at flight plan. So we've got the major legs, but obviously that doesn't give us the standard instrument departure or the terminal arrival route. So we'll go into SIDS. We know we're going to be taking it off. Now let me just remind myself, is it runway 16? Yeah, runway 16 doing the cause nine standard instrument departure. So runway 16, course 9, insert that into the flight plan. And then at the other end, there's Canberra. We are going to be doing the ILS, now let me just double check this, runway 35, ILS Z, or Z, and poly 9A, ILS Zulu 35, and poly 9A. There it is. And we don't want any transitions. So insert that and we get that on the flight plan. Now the interesting thing to me now is do we get any calculation of vertical speeds? I'm not sure if we do. Uh, next page. You know, now it knows the, the runway. I can't remember where this is in the configuration of the aeroplane. Yeah, because that just cycles round. If we look in the takeoff approach, oh, here we go. So, will it calculate these for us, or do we have to go and work them out ourselves? Can we long press them? No, it's not going to do it. Okay, so let's go into the calculator and work it out. So, if I can remember how to do this. This would be a good test of me, won't it? So we want to put runway... So if we refresh this, will it get the runway for us? Runway heading is 160. We'll just approximate things for it. Can we really not get this to pull the data from the flight plan? Wind is... I guess we can just take the reading from Little Navmo, can't we? One one nine eight or seven. Well, it's just close enough. It's within ten degrees. Outside air temperature, it's close enough. Weight of the aircraft. Is this really gonna, not going to tell us? So what's our gross weight? Two one nine point nine. Okay. Two one. 9.9 9. Now is that going to understand thousands or does it want the full number? I have a feeling that wants the whole number in pounds And this is going to be, oh it is in pounds, so 219937 Let's see what it says So will it allow me to put in a big number? 219937 Seven, nine. You have to go very slowly with it. No. So it wants two and nine point nine. It 
it can't put big enough numbers in. Flaps 15 degrees, anti-icing off, air conditioning on, flex no, so calculate. It wants the runway length, okay so how long is this runway? 11, 1200 feet, 12,000 feet even. 1200 would be very impressive wouldn't it? Calculate. There we go, 138, 138, 165. Okay. So we can press Alt 3, so we can put in 138 and 138 and 165 for the V2. It won't let us look. So, oh, it's maybe that's a different parameter it's talking about there. Okay, so take off shift. Interesting, what does that do? Anyway, approach. That should all be fine. We can obviously put the wind in at the destination. I don't think there's much wind about today. So that's given us some numbers we want. So having done that, ah, brilliant. So these numbers have moved on the markers. So they're all bunched up at one end until you've programmed the performance, which is why I wanted to do that. So we've got our basic route in to the, um, the computer. So something else we need to do, though, is come back into init. If we go next page, does it give us the opportunity to align IRS? Yes, it does. We have to do that. So it only appears if the three switches are set above and align and route. Oh, sorry, a set to a line and the route has been set, so then that appears and you can select it. So I had that in my notes. Okay, so... We're going to get on with the programming the flight. So I'm sorry I'm so rusty at this, it's so long since I've seen any of this. So seatbelt signs on, no smoking signs to auto. Uh, flight recorder button, which is further overhead, put to ground control, to on. And then lights, so Alt 2, strobe goes to auto, nav and logo go to 1, um, the ATS switches go to on, they won't if the inertial navigation system is not configured, neither will the oil dampers or the pitch trim. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Fuel pumps, switch all the fuel pumps on. So we'll press Alt and 1 to see further overhead. So you can see here's the master switches for the fuel pumps. So we're going to go and switch them all on. Window heaters, all of them go to on. So they're over here. And then the captain standby and first office uh, probe heat can go to on. APU bleed, so we should be showing a vertical line. So it's over here and we turn it on and it should open and that means the APU is now providing compressed air to start the engines. So then down in the cockpit on the FGCP we go and press the decision height button, set it to minus five and we calibrate the altimeters. I'm going to cheat and press B so they all go and configure themselves to the local barometric pressure. We're going to set the landing field elevation so it's underneath here. So I think it's about 1800 feet at um, Canberra. Uh, um, we check the ECAM APU. We know the APU is already running, so we can. All, all we have to do is go and press APU here on the central console, and the display here will show that the bleed is working. Power section, external power to off, so we can get rid of the external power now because the APU is running. We can come in here and go back to no, where, which page was it? Was it this one? Get rid of the GPU from the aeroplane, and we're ready to start the engines. But normally you wouldn't do that until pushback has happened. Of course, we have the the terrific simulator problem now of being the only people here. What? Shift P has just had a bit of a fit on us, hasn't it? So we're pushing back without a tractor by the look of it. Okay, okay, that's fine. Flight Sim is having a turn. We'll let it happen. 
So while that's doing that, we'll get the engine started. So we go and turn the ignition system to ignition system A, hit the start button, it says open, and you will see the N2 number is coming up. We'll keep an eye out of the window as we're doing this. So when it gets to 20%, we advance the fuel lever Engine number two, and it continues on. Let's have a look outside while it's happening, make sure we don't get pushed back into the grass. So you can see engine one is freewheeling in the air, engine two is spinning up. So we're going to stop the pushback at that point, put the parking brake back on for a moment. If we look overhead, we should see, yep, start two has just finished, so we can do start one. So we can now see N2 is increasing on engine number 1. So we wait for 20%. This is the same as lots of other aircraft at this point. So as it comes to 20% we can advance the fuel condition lever, or sorry, fuel lever for engine number 1. And you can see gas turbine is increasing, exhaust gas temperature is increasing, the turbofan speed is increasing, it's all looking good. So as soon as the ignition system finishes, the start button will go out and we can turn off the ignition. And then turn the APU off as well. So we're just waiting for that to happen. So there we go, it's gone back to arm. So ignition to off. Air bleed, APU bleed to off, and now the engines are running now, so we can go and turn the APU master switch to off as well. Okay, so down in the cockpit we can go and arm the speed brakes, and we can start taxiing basically. We can start going put our flaps to 15 degrees. And we can start, as we do the taxi, we're going to turn left, I believe, here. So I'm going to advance the throttles gently. Something's just spawned in next door to us over there. So we're going to go and set our initial climb out target altitude. We'll go for 10,000 feet. And I believe you push it towards the aeroplane to or no you pull it to select it I think in the A310. It's not the same as the A320. I think pushing will allow us to go between yeah hundreds and thousands. Pulling it is selecting. So that's selecting 10,000 feet as a target. We'll go and set the speed bug, get the throttles back to idle because we're accelerating gently across the tarmac as we're doing this. So we'll set the speed bug to, to say 200 knots maybe for the climb out. Can we auto pre-select? Well, no, we can't pre-select auto throttle immediately, but we should be able to pre-select nav mode. So the aeroplane will fly with. Just make sure it's a nav here on the master selector for the guidance. In terms of climb out, we need to also look at the throttle control system, so it's in toga by default, so you can put it in auto, but we'll leave it in toga for the moment. I don't think this has a rejected takeoff mode for the auto brakes, so we'll leave those alone. Looking pretty good. We'll go and clear that APU setting, so it's going to show us default configuration status information that are pertinent to the you know the phase of flight we're in. We're going to turn the heading selection to the runway heading so that's 160 degrees wasn't it for takeoff. So we just spin that round. I mean even though we're not going to use it it's handy to have it there. There we go 160 so yeah, it's an interesting one. What do we do about takeoff? Do we go and say this is in hundreds of or times a hundred? So you know, ten will be a thousand feet a minute. Um, so if we went for 
25 straight off the runway and just to have a look at the modes here um, if we pull this it's selecting it remember if we've got we've got level change mode available to us we've also got VL which is a, oh no so profile is the equivalent of VNAV virtual navigation so if we went to profile mode it would take over speed and climb rate to match the flight plan and because we've got that in from Simbrief if we go and have a little look you'll see it's got target airspeeds and altitudes so after we climb out it may be wise to go straight for profile mode and let the airplane do what it wants obviously that's not as much fun so maybe we'll use for today's purposes to try different modes out see how they behave We'll use level change to climb to 10,000, which is transition altitude, this part of the world. Once we get to 10,000, we'll come off the auto throttle and start to take, you know, um, set the barometric pressures, set the target altitude to cruise. And we could do another flight level change straight up, because I don't think there's many restrictions other than being at 4,000 feet by one of the first waypoints on the departure so we don't need, really need to worry too much about hitting targets on the way out obviously if you want to fly it neatly and tidily as, exactly as per the numbers you could if you wanted to just by going into profile mode so yeah it's slowly coming back I've not flown this in the simulator for a long long time and I don't fly it regularly, therefore I'm just not um, familiar, so I'm probably going to be a little bit behind the aeroplane at times. So let's get this into head tracking mode. There we go, head tracking's working. So we're on the runway, parking brake on for a moment. What have we forgotten to do? We haven't set TCAS or anything like that, have we? So we got TA RA mode. To be honest, you'd only want TA on takeoff, but we'll put up with that. Has it got a transponder down here somewhere? Yeah, so transponder one and two. Looks like it's already on. So we'll leave that alone. Obviously we don't have a controller anyway, so there's no need to worry too much about that. Okay. Lights. So, landing lights on. Yeah, and I'm going to turn the head tracking off because it's being a pain already. So, our strobes are on auto, that's fine. The beacon light, did I not turn the beacon light on before the engines? It should have been on. Anyway, uh, take off mode for the nose light. I think we're pretty much ready to go. So, parking brake off. Full throttle. Light amount of wind pushing us on the wrong way, but not much. So we're waiting for the rotate marker to come through. So gear up. Flaps up us one step. Just keeping an eye on the aeroplane, getting it trimmed out nicely. So you basically need to be at 4,000 feet by the time we get to that first waypoint, which is obviously going to happen very easily. So auto throttle on. Go for 220 knots.
and should we engage the autopilot now? And we'll go for a flight level change. So you can see I had deviated slightly from the plan, so it's just correcting that, getting us exactly back on plan. So we've gone for that flight level change, we've said 10,000 feet, so it's climbing for 10,000, maintaining 220, we can accelerate out to 250 knots now. So I think we're looking good. This can go to climb probably now on the auto. So if we put it onto auto, will it go to climb mode? Yes, it will. So that was all pretty straightforward stuff, wasn't it? We can change our decision height now, ready for the other end. So we can go for whatever we deem, but we're not going to worry too much about that. To be honest, I don't know how that interacts with the other systems. I've never looked into it. So, no doubt somebody will know. We didn't do a gross check of the flight plan, so you can always do that by switching over to plan mode. And then use, you know, just using the up and down arrows on the MCDU. So we're approaching 10,000 feet. Obviously we're well ahead of schedule for the climbing, which is good. downtown Melbourne so if I go and look below us you should see if you're from this part of the world you should see some recognizable landmarks around unfortunately there's cloud right over the top of the city which is a shame see some of the the jetties it's always a shame when the weather does that to you isn't it okay so let's go jump back inside how about if we look out the window no all we can see here is cloud now okay so we're at 10,000 feet so we'll stop messing around and we will go in and pre-select the um, barometric pressure to 2992. Do the same on the backup altimeter. And we'll then, I think the easiest way to do this is just, we could go for profile mode. So if we go profile, I'll show you what happens. You still have to set a target, but the aircraft will get there by following whatever the, um, the restrictions in the flight plan say. So if I say that, it's in profile mode. It's going to follow speeds and climb rates appropriate to the programming of, of, of the FMC, basically. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I hadn't raised the flaps. <laughs> That's interesting, though. It took no notice of flap configuration. That's fascinating. So let's increase the range on the navigation display. So it went and accelerated knowing that the flaps were down. They were still on five degrees. That's fascinating. So again, I said that mistakes would be made during the flight. I'm just not used to operating this airplane anymore. We've gone through 10,000 feet as well, so the landing lights can come off now. Same with the nose. And we're climbing out to cruise. So that's the Airbus A310. So there's not a lot more to do now. The aeroplane will fly its own way up to cruise altitude. The um, thrust performance, I'm not sure what it's called in the Airbus, in this model of Airbus. It's like the TMS in the 146, the thrust modulation system is similar in a strange sort of way. Um, it's doing its thing in auto. So we haven't got a lot to do other than wait till we get to cruise and and then arrange our descent, which again, if you're in profile mode, it will do it for you. So we'll have a look at descending maybe with vertical speed. 
with you know using auto throttle to manage and maybe land manually just because what can you learn if you're just letting the computer do it anyway so I'm going to pause here and I'll catch you again when we get nearer to the destination Okay, so I have unpaused the flight. We are zooming along the skies above a beautiful Australian day en route to Canberra, somewhere out there in the distance. If we have a look at the map, you can see we are approaching the Sovereu, and shortly before that is the top of descent marked on the navigation display. If we go and have a look in little nav map you can see based I've only got the A320 performance profile but it's the same kind of ballpark position um, the the main marker we're needing to look for here is uh, above 9,000 feet at Big Sav okay below 17,000 uh, so there's kind of a a window you have to fall between on this way down through the flight plan um, Obviously, if we leave the aircraft in profile mode, it will start descending. We'll have to give it a target altitude to come down to you, though. So if we told it to come down to 10,000 feet or 11,000, I'm just going to double check that. Let's have a look at Navigraph and look at the um, standard terminal arrival route. So actually, yeah, the, oh, it has, it has got the numbers on here. Um, Transition level, flight level 110, so 11,000 feet. Okay. That's the transition level though, not the transition altitude. Common mistake to make there. So let's go down here. We've got, yeah, transition altitude is 10,000 feet. So the, you commonly get 1,000 feet between the level and the altitude. So the transition level is the, the first flight level usable above the transition altitude. So 10,000 feet. Okay, so we want to come down to 10. That's good. So we click the bottom of this to select 10,000. Notice nothing is happening. That's because the aeroplane is in profile mode. And it doesn't have to do anything yet. Yeah, so it's, um, it's all clever stuff. But I think it'd be more fun if we descended by hand. And if we are going to descend, there are points in, you can see them actually in here probably, you'll see deceleration points marked in here. So yeah, speed limit, where it's bringing the speed down from 270 to 210 at a particular point in the plan. But I think it'd be good fun if we did this by hand. Um, so as soon as we turn at Sovru, I will begin descending. And rather than use level change mode, I think it would be more fun to use vertical speed. So I'll probably land by hand, but um, it's interesting, there's a VOR lock option, or v I'm presuming that's what VL stands for, and a land option that's both. So I'm guessing that's going to do the descent on the glide slope and that would be the auto land if it's available. I wasn't aware the A310 had auto land, but again, I'm not fully au okay with all of the systems, so there are going to be mysteries in this aircraft. So it's worth pointing out while we were in cruise, turn the seatbelt sign off, so when we start descending we'll have to go and turn that back on. We're about to turn at Sovru, let's go and reduce the range. So we get some a bit better display of what's going on down here with a little bit less clutter. Okay, so we're getting there. So just in terms of the systems, if you've not seen this aeroplane before, um, let's go and look at, there's a progress screen. So you can see where you are along your route. You can also go and obviously look at the, the flight plan page and it cuts off at the top automatically as you're flying. So you see the next legs that are approaching, reading down the screen. It's pretty great. You know, it's it's very easy to um, interpret what's going on. And of course we get these wonderful views outside of the aircraft of the Australian scenery whizzing past from 36,000 feet at the moment. And we're making our turn. 
so let's go and have a look at the navigation display we're at Sovru so let's go and manage our own descent shall we so we'll leave it'll be interesting actually as soon as we come off profile mode the speed should show back up so if we go and set vertical speed mode there we go look it's gone for Mach 0.82 because of our altitude so it automatically switched over to Mach numbers instead of knots so if we go for say 2000 feet a minute or 2500 feet a minute so let's see if the auto throttle can maintain that speed as we descend and we should see a green banana come down at which point you know it'll be estimating when we're going to get to 10,000 famous last words so it's doing uh, now look, see it says 2500 feet, so that's, yeah that's correct. So let's come down to 3000 feet a minute then. Select it, so you should see the vertical speed wind on a bit further. And we're still not seeing a green banana on the, you know, estimating our descent. Let's go and, so it's out to 80 miles at the moment, which is a bit less than we need. So it's still maintaining airspeed and we've still got some idle throttle. This is why I like doing this by hand, just to play with the numbers. So select 3,500 feet a minute. So we want to be above 9,000 feet at Big South, but we also need room to slow down. So let's go. I'm amazed this can descend so quickly and not gain airspeed. 4,000 feet a minute without any spoilers. I suppose it's quite a fat-bodied aeroplane, isn't it? So it's not very aerodynamic. So that's looking a bit better. So we've got some room before Big South, but again, it would be better if we could descend a bit more quickly. So 4,500 feet a minute. I'm just watching this to see if it can maintain it or if it's going to start to accelerate and the other effect you're seeing here is the indicated airspeed changes obviously as you get lower in altitude. This will switch over to knots very soon. It tends to be around about 26 to 28,000 feet, depending on the aircraft, sometimes a bit lower. So this will switch over automatically to reading knots instead of Mach number. So let's reduce the range on this again then. So yeah, we're looking good because we can, as soon as we get to 10,000, way hello, the USB switch is just flicked. So it's warning us the true air temperature is in the icing range, but unless we're in cloud, we've got really little to worry about, so we're steering actually away from the little bits of cloud that were around so I'm not going to worry too much about that we're actually heading off into the clear sky ahead of us so yeah here we go look oh hello what's going on there oh we're over speeding okay so spoilers so this is just what I was on about look I think we probably the weather has just updated and it gave us a headwind so we can't maintain this this is the danger and why kind of I wanted to show you that as well it's still yeah it's still doing it look as we're descending so I'm pulling those up so we're just in the overspeed regime and if we can't correct this in a timely manner doesn't like it does it so what we're going to do is an altitude hold and that will allow the speed to come off. There it goes. That was interesting. So it can't even maintain 2,000 feet a minute at this altitude. Yet it was allowing 4,500 feet earlier on. But then the throttles have raced. Why did that happen? See, that's fascinating. Those throttles were forwards. 
I wonder when we saw that USB glitch if that was the cause of that, that suddenly the throttles have shot forwards. Anyway, big sav we want at 9,000, we're tw still at 21,000 feet. So if we do a level change, let's see what the aeroplane can do on its own. Auto throttle is still on, so the throttles are retreating, or retarding I should say. And the aeroplane is now going to... Yeah, I think when we saw the controls flicker, I think something went wrong with the sim briefly. We should have the um, the seatbelts back on, by the way, during descent. So remember, transition altitude is 10,000 feet for this area. So you can see the run in now towards the destination. That's all good. So while we're just descending along here, we've got a little while to wait. We'll go and have a look. Um, so this is the ILS into Canberra. So we want the ILS set 109.5 and 348 degrees. So down here, this needs to be 109.5 and 348 degrees. So the other way. Okay, so that's just tuning in the nav radios. So when we get within range of, or in the ballpark of going over to ILS, we'll switch the switch here away from nav to ILS, and this will light up with the, or I seem to remember it will, <laughs> it should light up with the glide slope and localizer gauges. It's interesting that that glitch with the controls caused so much trouble through the through the um, throttles forwards. So I've just pulled the throttles on purpose to see what would happen, and it took notice of them. Look, but then it's doing it now because we're approaching ten thousand feet, and it's maintaining, or it's trying to maintain a ridiculous speed look. So we're going to we're going to pull back back to 250 knots now while we're on level. So we select 250 knots. So the aircraft is now coming back on its own. Let's take the spoilers back off. So we needed to be at 9,000 at Bixav, and obviously we have time now to slow down. So if we'd left it in profile mode, it would have just done all this on its own, but then we'd have learned nothing about the things that can go wrong and would have had nothing to fix. And I think that's usually more instructive than just sitting and watching. It's actually playing with the aeroplane along the way. So we'll also need to go and change the um, barometric pressure to the destination. So if we go to flights and pull up the information for Canberra, open the airport, go to the weather, we need to set 1011 hectopascals or 2985 inches. So 2985 and 2985. I'm not sure if the 298, well, that's just answered my own question there. I'm not sure if they were synchronized across the cabin. So the reason for the altitude restrictions are these hills. So you need to stay, stay out of their way. So we're at 250 knots now. No spoilers on. We could go for profile mode. And then we could go and set, if we go and look at the, the route in, the run in I should say, you've got 7,600 feet and then four 3,000 feet for Damco. So if we set a target of 3,000 feet, the aeroplane will descend. And because we're in profile mode, it's going to look after speed on its own. So it's gone and gone a few knots past, but it's you can hear the throttles retarding to get back. We could help that using spoilers if we wanted to. should now see this all playing out nicely so 
we need to be 9,000 feet at Big Sav. So you should see this level back out. Watch the vertical speed there. Look, we're approaching 9,000. Is profile mode going to take much notice of Big Sav? We're below 10,000 feet now as well, by the way, so the lights can come on. So there's 9,000. Is it going to wind it out? No. That's interesting. So I don't reckon much to their profile mode. <laughs> And the reason I'm so worried about that is because these hills, we need to clear them. So we're going to be watching this like a hawk if we get too far away from the profile, from the descent profile. I won't be impressed with it. We're also going to set the heading bug to the runway direction. So if we go and look, Canberra Airport runway direction is 347 degrees. So we're going to spin this round, even though we're not using the heading, just so it's pointing in the same direction as the runway. vertical deviation going on here on the navigation display and it's dropping down to 7,900 feet. It's still not miles away so it's looking for 7,000 feet at Honey which is just coming and we're dropping down so it's not a mile, it's not miles out. I just find it fascinating to watch how these various systems, what they're capable of and what causes them to lose control, in which case you have to take over. So we're going to be doing a steep left turn very shortly, I guess, out across this valley. Just looking at the nav display down here. So let's reduce the range on this to 30 miles. So we've got 10 miles to go until we do, until we do a left turn, so we'll be over the top of these hills, I imagine, when we do the left turn. So we're coming down to 7,000 feet for honey. Yeah, so it's pretty much actually on target. It's just weird that these are still showing vertical deviations. It's interesting. It's holding 7,000 though, look, which it is supposed to do until honey. So it is obeying the descent profile. the scenery. So it's going to take a, a turn over the top of these hills by the look of it. Starting descending again. Should put the head tracking on. As soon as we make this turn, we should be able to see, is, it, is this the airfield out here, or is it further around? It's difficult to see at the moment where it's going to appear from. Don't fly this route. Well, this is the first time I've done this route in this aeroplane, or anything like this, so I'm not sure quite what to expect. So daily we're supposed to be at 6,700, oh, it seems low. We're a thousand feet below where we should be, which makes sense why these markers are showing up. These hills look very close, don't they? So at this point, I wonder if we can get the ILS to show up. Yeah, the ILS beam's above us at the moment. So what we could do is altitude hold at this point. We'll still allow lateral navigation. 
do, doing 200 knots, so we can get the flaps down to the first stage. We can also bring the gear down at this point. And we can slow the aeroplane down. So remember, we're off of profile mode now. So we're about to go to the ILS. Let's go for landing mode. Yeah, I think we've missed it, so we'll go manual. We can see this runway out ahead of us, so we'll turn this off now. And we'll turn off the auto throttle. We're getting a warning about the disengage, so we press the red button on the yoke, and we're just taking over now. Start extending the flaps. We're pretty much on the ILS. So you can see there's the runway out there. We've got the um, glide slope and the localizer lined up already. We can reduce the range on the navigation display. So we can see runway's about 10 miles out. We'll bring the engines back up slowly to hold us at about 150 knots or thereabouts. Getting a little bit above on the glide slope. We're just managing that. I much prefer flying aeroplanes to watching computers and wondering if they're doing the right thing. I mean half of that was just me not being familiar with the aeroplane, but at least I know I can fly an aeroplane. <laughs> I'm not confident that I can trust those systems to do what they said. Okay, I missed the glide slope, which is why landing mode didn't do anything. You have to fly in from underneath the glide slope typically for it to work, and I didn't. It may be you have to have both autopilots on as well. I'd have to go and read the operator's, the, you know, the pilot operating handbook for that. Let me just straighten this up, come a bit closer to the instruments for you so you can see them a bit easier as well. So I'm just moderating the throttles to hold us at 100. And 50 knots, more flaps, which will mean more throttle. Yeah, look at the speed coming off with the extra drag from the flaps. So I'm increasing the throttle to balance that out. So we're now full flaps. And trimming it gently, just to hold the glide slope. It's about 140 knots will be good, 135-ish be perfect. It's pretty stable. It's stable enough that he says as we hit a patch in the air and it starts to sink and it's decelerating stopping it from doing that so we can have a quick look from outside. It's quite cool, doesn't it? So we need to concentrate now. Yeah, look, we lost a few knots there. So I'm just opening the throttles up so we don't get a stick shake because that will jam the auto throttle on if that happens. I seem to remember. Got caught by that. Now look at that. The, the Pappy lights don't agree with the ILS at all. They're saying they're far too low. Right on the edge of being too slow as well, so I'm going to give it a bit of thrust just to lift us a few more knots. But that's of course generating lift. Now the pappies are agreeing, uh, but they're mm, they're within a pixel of agreeing. Interesting. Yeah, the ILS and the Pappies don't agree very much. So obviously we've overshot the landing markers, but... Okay, let's try the reverse the same. And spoilers as well. 
reverses off, wheel brakes on. It's a big heavy lump in it, it doesn't land very quickly. So flaps up, spoilers off. And just moderate the wheel brakes. Uh, I didn't see whether we need to exit left or right. I think the buildings are to our left, but back up the airfield. So the strobes can come back off, landing lights can come off. Obviously if we had the tower we'd be announcing clear of active, but we don't have to because we have nobody controlling us. Costco, <laughs> a bit of free advertising, IKEA, or IKEA, as the Northern Europeans call it. So there we go, the A310. Obviously, I'm very rusty with flying it, and we saw that on approach with like missing the glide slope for landing mode, but landing was okay. So this is the Orbex version of Canberra. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So let's go and retract those landing lights. We haven't actually done that yet. We should have the taxi light on, I guess, as well. Have a look at it from the outside as we're rolling along, making our way back down the airfield. Carry on straight down. Go straight for the terminal, shall we? So hopefully you've enjoyed this today. It was um, a trip down memory lane for me, but good to get familiar with the A310, knowing that the 300's coming and that it's going to share systems. Because as I said at the start, or I think I said at the start, the A300 that any builds are going to release is the late model that inherited a lot of the advancements that were made for the 310. I guess another way you can argue about that is the developers thought, how can we make a different aeroplane that shares some of the work we put into a different aeroplane? And they did their research on the A300 and thought, ah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure a ton of work has also gone into it, but you can see the sense behind the decision. Okay, what's, what's the easiest one to pull into here? This one here, probably. So if we slow down. Now I have got an add-on, but I haven't got it installed at the moment, that makes these digital displays work on some airfields. So you get the, the guided parking experience that the real air crews get. Obviously you can see at Canberra, there's, they've got all the um, terminal contents modelled, which kills the frame rate, but it does look pretty, doesn't it, seeing people in the, the terminals. Okay, so obviously when you get to the destination, you can either put the APU on, or we could play games with coming back in here, connecting a GPU, switching back to GPU, external power is available, so we can go to it. And then we could shut the engines without having any untoward, he says, as he tries to click on them. There we go. And we saw the cross, the switch over to the um, ground power just happened. So beacon can come off because the engines are not on. The nav light can go to off. If I can click on it, the taxi light can come off. And we can play games with, obviously, getting the, um, the jetway connection. And do we open the doors here? Door one left, I imagine, is that one? Yes, that's correct. So if we were to wander around the corner now, 
Can we do that from here? Do we have to unlock the door? Or will it just unlock? No, it just unlocks. So then we can see there's the jetway. Oh, there's a bit of a step. They've missed it by about a foot. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Anyway, you get the idea. You can look at this from outside and it's got a fairly good connection to the cabin. Can't really complain, can you? Because this is, um, obviously, I, I don't know how that is configured on aeroplanes to inform where the jetway should connect, but that's not bad. Okay, and I guess the one thing we haven't done here is go and turn the passenger seatbelt sign back off, meaning they can now go and cause mayhem behind us. Okay, there we go. Airbus A310. Obviously there's a whole raft of things you have to then go through the cockpit switching off, like the fuel pumps and the initial navigation systems and so on and so forth, and we're not going to do that today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll see you again soon.